Bismillah Rahman Rahim, good evening. You're watching the news from the Sultan of the Fuman Television. First, the headlines. With the aim to introduce practical skills to entrepreneurs, the public authority for small and medium sized enterprises, development launches Inspire and Success program. A seminar in the Governorate of Musandam discusses systems of salaries, retirement, and pension fund law of the civil service. And rains fall in a number of wilayas in the governorates of Remi, Dakhliya, Dahra, and North Sharqiya. Those were the headlines and now the news in detail. His Majesty Sultan Qaboos has sent a cable of condolences to the custodian of the two holy mosques, King Abdullah bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud of the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia, on the death of Her Royal Highness Princess Nozha bin Saud bin Abdul Aziz Al Saud. The Public Authority for Small and Medium Sized Enterprises Development organized a guiding program, Inspire and Success, which focuses on attracting leading of experts in SMEs entrepreneurship and highlighting personal and practical skills of entrepreneurs as well as motivating them to develop their SMEs. The one-year program aims to introducing the entrepreneurs' experiences in this field. A number of activities will be implemented in the program, namely two specialized courses for SMEs entrepreneurs and e-series activities in the guide program website. The authority will provide a volunteer's trade network to present consultation and technical assistance for the guide and entrepreneurs in accounting, marketing and legal procedures. On his part, Ismail bin Ahmed Al Belushi, Deputy Chief Executive Officer of Special Economic Zone at Dukum, reiterated that the economic zone is providing a wide range of investment opportunities for small and medium sized enterprises. He said that the authority this year and last year announced projects for the SMEs, but regrettedly, there were not too much reactions from the SMEs for these projects. But they are diverse projects either on local society development or other economic projects. He added that the delegation visited the economic zone to study projects either economic, touristic or logistic. He concluded by saying that Special Economic Zone at Dukum last year formed a social development committee in order to make projects to serve the local community. A meeting was held between the officials of Oman Chamber of Commerce and Industry and entrepreneurs in the government of Dakhliya. It discussed a number of topics relating to small and medium enterprises projects and development of economic sector in the wilayas of the government. The meeting also discussed matters related to private sector as well as challenges facing entrepreneurs in addition to development of SME sector and investment in entrepreneurship field. The Chamber also aimed to upgrade its work mechanism and services during the upcoming period. To introduce laws and systems of salaries as well as civil service pension fund law, a seminar was organized by the Ministry of Sports Affairs in the Governorate of Musandam. During the seminar, an awareness lecture was presented on specialization of the pension fund. The first topic of the lecture focused on participations by employee or the government, as well as terms of previous period of services in state administrative bodies or in companies or institutions of the private sector. The second topic on after-service benefits and pension bonuses, the seminar also discusses about heirs eligible for pension and how to distribute a pension on them. Still to come in our news bulletin. The Songhai farm in Benin, nothing goes to waste.
Welcome back to the news from the Sultanate of Oman Television. April, the Flemish city hosts the EU leaders coinciding with the centenary of the outbreak of First World War. More details in the following report. White gravestones dot the countryside around Ypres in northwest Belgium, a haunting reminder of the deadly trench warfare of World War I. The largest and most famous cemetery is Tyne Cot, on the road to Passchendaele. Though just a few kilometres across, the area it occupies was strategically important in 1917, and troops from the British Empire took five months to conquer it. Now 11,000 white gravestones cover the landscape. We wanted to achieve a, a, a cemetery which feels like an English garden. So it feels like the, la the land these men left behind and something that people can c visit from the UK and from all over the Commonwealth and identify with. Many tombs bear the names of soldiers, their regiments and the date they died. For those whose bodies could not be identified, there's a simple inscription, known unto God. The names of 35,000 men who died in the muddy trenches are engraved on these walls. A lot of people sometimes say, oh, World War I was totally useless, but it isn't. If you look today, how people are coming together to commemorate them, already that is a proof that there's some reason why they fought here. There's a connection now in between countries. It's a sad connection, but it's a connection and it brings people back together. Ypres itself was left in ruins by the fighting. Only the imposing ramparts, which date back to the reign of Louis XIV, survived intact. Every evening at 8 o'clock, watched by a hushed crowd, four members of the volunteer local fire brigade play the last post bugle call in homage to the fallen soldiers. It's been held daily since 1928 and was only suspended during World War II. It will also be a key event at Thursday's meeting of European leaders. After the ceremony, they'll attend a dinner in Ypres before returning to Brussels to discuss the future direction of the EU, no doubt mindful of the fact that nowadays conflict in Europe tends to happen around the negotiating table and not on the battlefield. Governors of Abremi, Zahra, Dakhliya and North Sharkia had moderate to heavy rains, causing some wadis in the governorate of Abremi and Zahra to overflow. The rain had contributed in reducing temperature and helped to increase underground water after recharge dams retained water. These pictures are taken from the wilaya of Mahada in the governorate of Abremi, in which a number of wadis are overflowing. Within the context of awareness campaign to combat drugs and narcotics activities of the campaign called Be Alert and a Social Week were concluded in the government of the FAR. They were organized by the Ministry of Social Development. It contained workshops on the importance of voluntary work, which is considered an obligation by all members of the society concerning the, grad co the drug combat and voluntary work. Be Alert campaign targeted various members of the society in order to highlight dangers of drugs and its serious damage. With the advent of holy month of Ramadan, iftar saim or meal for a fasting person campaign started throughout the Sultanate to benefit those in need as sports teams commenced their preparation to organize cultural and social activities to activate and revive days and nights of the holy month. Oman's traditions represented in solidarity and cooperation are highlighted in the holy month through teams, individuals and society in large. Father Godfrey Nzamujo nips up and down as the paths in Sungai, the, orga the organic farm he created nearly 30 years ago as a tool against poverty and rural mi migration in Africa. Here's a report. Organic tomatoes and chicken droppings turned into biogas. At the Songhai farm in Benin, nothing goes to waste. In the 30 years since it was set up by Godfrey Nizamujo, it's become a model for farming in Africa. Its aims, maximize yields without using chemicals, which are expensive for farmers and harmful to health. 
It's not just any production, but clean production, a production which ensures good health for producers, consumers, and for the soil. We really put agriculture at the center of nature and people. From just one parcel of land in 1985, Songhai now sprawls over 24 hectares. All the produce is grown and distributed on site, creating a micro-economy. We fixed this image of Africa, Africa holding out its hand, Africa the victim. But when you look at the young people today, they're standing tall, ready to fight and to seize the future. Every day, an army of staff and apprentices get their hands dirty, growing fruit, vegetables and rice, whilst also tending fish and raising livestock. Paul wants to follow his parents into farming, but make it more profitable. With modern methods, things take less time. What we used to do in two days, we now do in two hours. That's what's impressed me most at Songhai. As well as tackling the challenges of poverty and the environment, Songhai prizes education and it's also a school. Every year 400 students are selected and trained. Back in their villages, they'll put modern organic techniques into practice. Songhai has been used as a blueprint to take the concept outside Benin. Centers are already open in Nigeria, Sierra Leone and Liberia. And with 13 other countries in West and Central Africa in the pipeline, many farms will be hoping to put their experience at Songhai into practice. Now for the general weather forecast. Clear to partly cloudy skies will prevail over the coastal areas of the government of the far and nearby mountains with chances of intermittent drizzle. Rest of the Sultanate will have clear to partly cloudy skies with chances of rainfall over parts of the Hajar Mountains. Winds will be southwestly moderate to active along the coasts of Arabian Sea, while it will be southeasterly light to moderate along the rest of the Sultanate. Seas along the coastal areas of Arabian Sea will be with a maximum wave height of 3.5 meters and along the rest of the Sultan's coast it will be moderate with to rough with a maximum wave height of 3 meters. This is the Sultanate of Oman Television. Before we end tonight's bulletin, here are the main points once again. With the aim to introduce practical skills to entrepreneurs, the Public Authority for Small and Medium-Sized Enterprises Development launches Inspire and Success Program. A seminar in the Governorate of Musandam discusses systems of salaries, retirement and pension fund law of the civil service. And rains fall in a number of wilayas in the governments of Bremi, Dakhliya, Zahira and North Sharqiya. With that, we come to the end of tonight's news bulletin. From all of us here at the studio and the newsroom, it's good night.